Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Amen. Let's just begin to worship the Lord in this house. Would you just lift your hands? Amen. Before you go to your seat, let's just, just, just open our mouth and begin to just bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up. Continue to bless him as you go back. Hallelujah. We lift you up, oh God. We lift up your holy name. We magnify the King of Kings this morning. We glorify the Lord of Lords this morning. Hallelujah, for he is our strong tower. He is our solid rock. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. So God, we bless your name. We gather in your house just to bless your name. We gather in your house just to lift up your wonderful and matchless name of Jesus. He is holy and he is worthy. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. We honor Jehovah Jireh this morning. We honor the King of Kings this morning. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. We forget about ourselves and we concentrate on you, oh God. And we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. We give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Not for what he has done or what he's about to do, but just because he is God. Just because he is God. And he is God alone. Is anyone ready to rejoice in the house this morning? Just because he's God alone. Hallelujah. Just because he's Jehovah. we woke up this morning. This is why we gathered here this morning, just to lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We offer him a sacrifice of praise. He's deserving of it all. Hallelujah. And Lord, I lift your name on high. We love to sing your praises, and we're so glad that you're in our lives. We're glad that you came to save us. He is holy. Are we ready to lift up his name on high? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, we lift. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name on high. And Lord, I love Lord, I love to sing your praises, and I'm so glad, I'm so glad you're in my life, and I'm so, I'm so glad you came to save us. Yes, Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love, Lord, I love to sing your praises, and we're so glad that you're in our lives. Join the hearts, I'm so glad you came. Yeah, I'm so glad you came to save us. You came, you came from heaven to work, to show.
on high. Lord, I lift her name on high. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And dark Darkness tries to hide. They tremble at his voice. They tremble at his voice. Tremble at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great. How great is Yeah. 
again dancing. How great thou art. How great you are, Lord. How great is our God. 
How great is our God. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Would you just tell him how great he is? Would you just tell your God how great he is? Come on, tell him how great he is. Come on, somebody, somebody, somebody experience the greatness of God in this building. Hallelujah. Would you just begin to tell your God how great he is? How great are you, Lord? Great, 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 great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You're excellent, Jesus. You're excellent. You're great, God. You're perfect in all your ways. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Come on, Zion. Tell him how great he is. Tell him how great he is. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Great you are, Lord. Great you are. Great, great, great. Great. Hallelujah. Our God is great and greatly to be praised in the mountain of his holiness. Hallelujah. You're great, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great. Hallelujah. Great are your Lord. Great are your Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is a river that is flowing from deep within. A river of worship in this house. Oh, hallelujah. He's great. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Angels look at each other and said, Holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Hallelujah. 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 You're great, God. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great, God. Great, 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 God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Omnipotent Father, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Almighty God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Great is He, great is He, great and mighty is He. He's great, He's great. Would you just let go and worship Him in the house? Oh, He's great, He's great, He's great. He's great. He's a great healer. Oh, he's a great friend. He's a great companion. Oh, he's a great leader. Hallelujah. He's a great deliverer. Everything he does is great. Great God. Great God. A great God deserves great praise. A great God deserves great praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great are your Lord. Great are your Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, just pour out in his presence. Just pour out in his presence. Pour out in his presence. Forget about the formalities. Forget about the ceremony and the rituals. Just pour out in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Your 
now fills this place. So arise. So arise. And be blessed by our praise as we glory in love. We give you reverence. Just hold the music for a second. Everyone just open your mouth and just bless him. Hallelujah. Let the sound of the worship. Hallelujah. 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 Just hold the music one second. Hold the music. We're coming to you, musician. Just hold the music one second. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not conjuring up his presence. Hallelujah. 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 But they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Lift our hands up with our hands lifted up and our mouth filled with praise. Hallelujah. We will bless you, oh Lord. We will bless you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy of the glory, Lord. You're worthy of the honor, Jesus. You're worthy of the praise, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you, Jesus. Oh, you deserve the glory in this house. Hallelujah. We remove every barrier. Hallelujah. Every stronghold, we pull it down now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every barrier to worship. Every barrier to praise. Hallelujah. We cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We glorify you. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thou art worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. Self be slain now in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb that was slain from before the foundation of the world. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Our righteous redeemer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. A privilege and honor just to worship at his throne. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, thou art worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Holy Ghost, you're welcome in this place. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Ghost. We welcome you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we glorify you. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on us today, Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh, fall afresh on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to move on, but would you just wave your hands in the house? We're moving forward. Hallelujah. But just wave your hands. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 thank you Jesus, hallelujah. 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 Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Rest in this atmosphere, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your God. We don't mind waiting, Lord. We don't mind waiting, Lord. We don't mind waiting, Lord. We don't mind waiting. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless you, God. Oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that hath breath, let everything that fits the criteria of breathing, let everything that hath breath, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Is everybody breathing in the house? Is everyone breathing in the house? Let everything that hath breath, let everything that hath breath, Hallelujah. 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 Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? David said, I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Any glad people in the house today? Anybody glad to be in the house today? Hallelujah. I want you to say it with your face. Come on, say it with your face. Are you glad to be in the house? Can you just give me a smile in the house? Hallelujah. God is smiling on us. Can we smile back? Oh, hallelujah. 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 Show some teeth if you have to, but would you just give me a smile in the house? Hallelujah. God is good. I was glad. I was glad. All right, all right, we, we, we have to get into the Word, and we're going to do our offering. I'm going to ask you to do two things in the house. The Spirit of the Lord is in the house, and we don't, we don't want to mess that up, but I'm going to ask you to do something for me. Amen. The Bible says, this is how you know, they will know that you are my disciples, by how you love one another. Amen. I want you to just do me a favor and just give three people a hug in the house and tell them, welcome into the house of the Lord. Introduce yourself to someone new, if need be, but everybody, I need you to just share the love in the house today. Amen. Give somebody a hug if you can. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, everybody. Come on, move out of your seat. Move out of your seat. Tell somebody you love them. Welcome into the house of the Lord. This is becoming my favorite part of the service. <laughs> We're blessed in the sea. In the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come, when we go. We cast down every stronghold, poverty, for the devil is defeated. Oh, I love you, I love you. When we go, sickness and poverty. We're blessed. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come. Down every stronghold.
right? That's a lot of love. Come on. Come on now. That is a lot of love. All right. All right, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I know a lot of things go on, and the more things get in the mind, sometimes it's the more forgetful we get. All right? And how many people know that God is a God that throws our sins in the sea of forgetfulness? Oh, thank God God can get forgetful too. <laughs> All right, so this is what I'm going to ask you to do. A couple weeks ago, we requested that everyone not sit so far back. So I know some people forgot. But I'm going to ask you real quick, real quick, to move your seat up further to the parameters that were set. The ushers will help you if need be, move your stuff. But let's do that real quick. Let's do that real quick because time is really going. All right, ministers, ministers, you know your places. If you can just help me and move to your rightful places. Remember, God is a God of order. Uh, service, mash up your now. Come on, ministers, ministers, rightful places, please. All right, let's move up. And we are moving in beyond the outer court. So you probably want to get a seat where you can see what's going on over here. Amen? All right, if you got your offering while you're moving forward, could you just stand with me? Come on, come on. Some of you are just moving up a little bit. You're so, you, you know where you're supposed to be. Come on, work with, work with the program, brethren. Work with the program, brethren. All right, if you got your offering, if you got your offering, stand with me. Amen. The word is coming forth very quickly. Amen. 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 If you've got your offering, amen. Pastor Watson, come, you do this part. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's offering time in the house. Glory to God. And we don't want to separate offering from worship. That is what we do most of the time when it comes to offering. Our countenance change and our attitude change. But we don't want to separate offering from worship. It is still worship, saints. It is still worship. And we are blessed by God that he has enabled us to earn something to bring into the house of God. So we want to worship him this morning with our offering. Amen? We're going to worship him with our offering. With a true heart. Amen. We're going to worship God with our offering as we stand. Let us stand together. Glory to God. Let him breathe. Let him breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe on. Hold up your offering. Let him breathe. We're looking to him for increase. Oh, let him breathe on me. Let the breath of God now breathe on me. One more time. Let him breathe on me. Let him breathe on me. Let the breath of gracious Father and our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, again we come before you. We thank you today for the privilege you have given us to be in your house. We thank you for the offering that you have given us, Lord. You have blessed us that we can give back a portion in your house. 
And as we hold these offerings in our hands today, we ask that the bread of God will breathe upon it. Oh God, we ask that you will multiply this offering, God. Some are giving out of necessity, God. But we know, Lord, you said you should give. Amen. And it would be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto our bosom. We ask the blessing upon the offering on the tithes today. Let your glory be filled among us today, Lord, as you magnify yourself among us. Bless us all together as we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. As I move, as I move. A triumphant life. I accept every supernatural concept and idea that God has leading me to my destiny. I, I sow triumphantly. I receive triumphantly. I give triumphantly. And I live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The hushers will direct you as you give your offering. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises.
to be praised. All right, you just sang it. Why don't you do it? Sing praises unto God. Hallelujah. Want to go sit down, please, please. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. It's time for the word. It's time for the word. I don't think I'm going to moderate any more service because you guys get started, then I get started, and then you, and then it's just, I think we have to get somebody else to do this, Pastor Watson. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to hold myself together here. Amen. Let's bless the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. There's a spirit of praise in this house. Would you just open your mouth and give God praise? Hallelujah! Glory to God. Glory to God. It's time for the word. It's time for the word. But we want to acknowledge our leadership in the house, our Bishop Eric McLeod, First Lady McLeod in the house. Would you thank God for our bishop? We honor you, sir. Amen. Pastor Watson, Pastor Richards, Evangelist Richards. Amen. All the laity, all the, all the leaders in the house, all the, everyone in the pew, would you put your hands together for yourself in this house? I said put your hands together for yourself in this house. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Hallelujah, in unity. Amen, it's time for the word. Amen. Amen, the Lord has been blessing us. Amen. And we are moving into the next, next area, as I said before. Amen. Amen. And we're excited for the word in the house. Amen. Amen. Our speaker is going to come at this time. Uh, none other than Sister Dion Lindsay. Would you put your hands together? Amen for her. Can you hear me? Oh, all right, great. I first want to give honor to God, who is the head of my life. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Bishop. Good afternoon, First Lady, Pastor Watson, Pastor Richards, Evangelist Richards, Pastor Lindsay, Sister Kim Lindsay, all the ministers, all the saints. I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I was thinking a little earlier uh, while we were worshiping how special it is that we get to do this, that we get to honor God with our voices, that we get to honor God with our hands, that we get to honor God with our entire lives. Um, and I heard some praise happening behind me, and I turned around, and I feel like I have a very distinct honor because I get to teach Children's Church a couple Sundays out the month. So I get to experience this all the time, but I don't know if you noticed that while we were worshiping, our kids were worshiping too. They were lifting up their hands, they were praising, they were honoring God, so much so that they laid hands on each other and prayed for each other. And all I could think is how special what a privilege and what an honor. What a privilege and an honor that we don't have to go to priest anymore and offer up a sacrifice before, that, before we can honor God, but we are the sacrifice that we presented our bodies as living sacrifices. What a privilege and an honor that Jesus died for us and he is the great high priest. And so through him, we have access to the Father. What a privilege and an honor to be able to worship God. And I'm just thinking because we're talking about the tabernacle, right? And I know that we've gone through all the parts of the tabernacle, the outer courts, the inner courts, the holy of holies, right? And I was thinking, I don't, I don't remember if this was mentioned, but I was looking at the setup of the tabernacle and there's only one way to get in. There aren't additional entrances. You can't like slide under the curtain or anything like that. There's just one way into the tabernacle. There's just one way. 
There's just one way into the holies of holies. There's just one way to access to the Father. And I was just thinking, imagine being around during the time of the Israelites, right? And God had very specific instructions on how you presented sacrifices. It had to be this first bull, and it couldn't have have any blemishes and the first fruit and all of these things and you had to make sure everything was right and perfect before you can present a sacrifice to God before you can come into the holies of holies and as a matter of fact we the regulars couldn't even get into the holies of holies it was just the priests that's it we just brought the sacrifice and hope that they did what they needed to do so that we can have forgiveness of our sins so that we can just have a little access to God. And what a privilege, what an honor that through Jesus, through the one way to the Father, that we, all of us, we're not even Israelites, we're the Gentiles, but all of us have access. And so while we were worshiping a little earlier, all I could think is, wow, what a privilege and what an honor, how special it is that we get to worship, how special it is that we have ac direct access to the Father. There are no ins and outs, no ifs, ands, or buts, but direct access to the Father. Um, but that's not, you know, my topic for today, so let me just dive right in. Um, so today, I will be talking to you about the table of showbread. Um, most of the scriptures that I'll be reading from today are from the New Living translation. So if it just seems a little bit different to you, I promise it's still Bible, just a different translation. Um, so I want to talk first about, uh, we're going to, the first scripture is going to be coming from Exodus chapter 25, verses 23 to 30. Actually, let me pause really quick. In case this is your first time here, and in case this is your first time tuning in, I want to give you a little bit of background. So the Israelites, and if I'm talking, speaking too fast, please let me know. I'm nervous, and when I'm nervous, I speak fast. So I'm just trying to slow, I'll slow it down for you, please. So the Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians. And after God had sent Moses in a series of plagues, Pharaoh had finally decided, yes, I will let the Israelites go. So they gathered all their things, everything that they've acquired for the hundreds of years that they were in slavery while in Egypt, and they set out. On their way, and they're going to Canaan land, to the promised land, they get to a point where, like, they're murmuring, they're concerned, they're like, God, how are you going to show up for us? What are you going to do for us? We're hungry. We could have starved in Egypt. God grants them manna from heaven. That's important. We'll get to that a little bit later. And as they're going through, traveling through the desert, eventually God gives instructions to Moses to build this tabernacle. And these instructions are exceedingly specific, down to the 27 and a half cubits width, and you need to be encased in gold, and these are the bronze pillars. He gives very specific instructions for every part of the tabernacle that you see here, there is nothing accidental about it. It wasn't a fly-by-night thing. These are very specific instructions. Down to the garments that the priests were to wear, specific instructions. Down to the food that they were to eat, the table of showbread, specific instructions. So in Exodus chapter 25, and I'm going to be reading from verses 23 to 30. Then make a table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it with pure gold and run a gold molding around the edge. Decorate it with a three inch border all around and run a gold molding, molding excuse me, along the border. Make four gold rings for the table and attach them at the four corners next to the four legs. Attach the rings near the border to hold the poles that are used to carry the table. Make these poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Make special containers of pure gold for the table, bowls, ladles, pitchers, and jars to be used in pouring out of liquid offerings. Place the bread of the presence on the table to remain before me at all times. 
I'm going to jump over to Leviticus chapter 24, verses 1 through 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, command the people of Israel to, pr to bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light, to keep the lamps burning continually. This is the lampstand that stands in the tabernacle, in front of the inner corner that shields the Ark of the co Covenant. Aaron must keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence all night. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation. Aaron and the priests must tend to the lamps on the pure gold lampstand continually in the Lord's presence. You must bake 12 flat loaves of bread from choice flour using four quarts of flour for each loaf. Place the bread before the Lord on the pure gold table. Arrange the loaves in two stacks with six loaves in each stack. Put some pure frankincense ne near each stack to serve as a representative offering, a special gift presented for the Lord. Every Sabbath, this bread must be laid out before the Lord as a gift from the Israelites. It is an ongoing expression of the eternal covenant. The loaves of bread will belong to Aaron and his descendants who must eat them in a sacred place for they are most holy. It is the permanent right of the priests to claim this portion of the special gifts, gifts presented to the Lord. Outside of the tabernacle, the tribes were set up all around when, it, when they actually set up the tabernacle because it was designed to be taken as they traveled through the wilderness. The, the tribes were set up all around the tabernacle, all the 12 tribes of Israel. And on the table of showbread, what I just read to you about the 12 loaves, that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And in all parts of the tabernacle, God specifies that there ought to use acacia wood. And this is just like a small portion. I just thought it was very interesting that there is an acacia tree that grows in the desert, and it's specifically designed to thrive in the desert. And what's special about that wood, it's so special that the Bible mentions it approximately 29 times, um, mostly during the, the, the building of the different parts of the altar. And it's, even to this day, acacia is great for outdoor furniture. It resists water, it resists bugs, right? And acacia was adaptable to the, is adaptable to the harsh conditions of the desert. And that's so important because the tabernacle is designed to be taken apart and because the tabernacle is to house the presence, right? Like it needed to have a wood, it needed to have a structure that was going to be durable and to be able to, to sustain the experience of the Israelites as they travel through the wilderness. But we really came here to talk about this showbread. And I guess if I had a topic, it would be bread is life. So, like I said before, in Exodus 16, in, in Exodus, when the Israelites were traveling through the desert, they came to a point where they looked around and there was no food, and they said, if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day, the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. I'm sorry. On the sixth day, they will gather food, and when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. In the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaints which are against him, not against us. What have we done that you should complain about us? This is Moses speaking. Then Moses added, the Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning. For he has heard all of your complaints against him. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. And when the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as the frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites called the food manna. 
It was white like coriander seed, and it tasted like honey wafers. Bread is life. When we think about bread, we think about sustenance. Um, bread offers, bread in its purest form, without all the additives that we get in our food now, bread in its purest form offers nutrients to our body. And we know this because bread is one of, not only do we know this because science, but also we know this because this is one of the ways in the Old Testament that God would provide for his people. For the Israelites, he provided manna from heaven. For Elijah, he provided food. For Elisha, he provided food. Bread is filling. You know, think about when you go to a restaurant. <clears throat> um, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite breads. It is a red lobster cheddar bay biscuits. Uh, my friends and I, who can attest in the corner, have made trips on occasion, not frequently, to Red Lobster just for the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. And we sit there, you eat the biscuits, you get, you're filled. They're flavorful, they're delicious. You go to several restaurants and they serve you bread, and you decide on the quality of the restaurant based on the quality of the bread that they give you. I have had conversations with people where it's like, I'm not going back to this restaurant because the bread that they served at the table was garbage and we should not eat that anymore. Bread is sustenance, bread sustains you. Um, I remember distinctly drinking cornmeal par porridge as a kid. And for context, I hated porridge. And I know hate is a strong word and I really mean it. I did not like porridge. But sometimes my dad would break up pieces of bread and put it in the porridge. And so then I would be like, okay, I can eat this now. And as soon as the bread was done, I was done eating the porridge. But the bread in the porridge, I'm going to eat that. Think about the times when you were broker than broke. And I'm talking about bread in all its forms. So when you had some saltines and sardines, and that's all that you could put together to have some food, bread is sustenance. Um, I've heard of Southern Americans when they don't have that much to eat, if I can make a cornbread, some greens and some black eyed peas, it is filling. Bread is sustenance, bread is life. In 2 Kings, there was a famine in the land and Elisha had the opportunity to feed 100 people from 20 loaves of barley. That was one of the first miracles that we saw, including that involved food and specifically bread. It says that one day a man from Baal Shalisha brought the man of God a sack of fresh grain and 20 loaves of barley bread made from the first grain of his harvest. Elisha said, give it to the people so they can eat. What? His servant exclaimed. Feed a hundred people with only this? But Elijah repeated, give it to the people so that they can eat, for this is what the Lord says. Everyone will eat, and there will even be some left over. And when they gave it to the people, there was plenty for all, and some left over, just as the Lord has promised. Bread is life. God, our provider, provides us with bread. Why? Bread is life. Elijah in 1 Kings 17, now Elijah who was from Tishbe in Gilead told King Ahab, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Some background on Elijah, he was a prophet and essentially he was traveling all over the place just giving the word of the Lord and picking up and going and picking up and going and just giving the word of the Lord. So Elijah didn't have a job that gave him money. And so somehow he needed to get sustenance. He needed to get food. He needed to be fed. And so the Lord says to Elijah, go to the east and hide by Kerith Brook near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kerith Brook east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat every morning, and he drank from the brook. Bread is life. 
bread in our culture now has a bad reputation. There's too many carbs. It has too many carbs. It's fattening. It's not good for you. But honestly, bread sustains you. There are times in the morning where I'm rushing out to work. I won't even tell you that story. What I will tell you is that there is a bakery called Tasty Delicious. And nothing brings me more joy than if I'm riding home from church with my brother and he decides to stop at the bakery. Because then I can get a warm loaf of hard old bread. And when I can feel the heat emanating from that bag, I can only think, ooh, this is going to be good. I can't wait to get home and cut into a slice. But also on those days when I'm rushing to work and I remember, ah, I have some hard old bread. Let me make this coffee really quick, get a slice of bread, and that's all I need. I am full until lunch. Bread is life. Bread sustains. So now I'm going to take you on over into the New Testament for more examples of when God showed up and provided bread for his people. And I'm going through this because I really want you to understand, even with the bad rap that bread has, even with all of this, that bread is important, right? Throughout history, bread is important. If we think about different cultures, every culture has their type of bread. They have their type of bread food. There's bread pudding. There are dumplings. There are fried dumplings all types of dumplings. Bread is life. You get some flour, a little oil, maybe a little water, a pinch of salt, no extras. Bread can actually provide you the nutrients. There's sprouted breads that have all sorts of grains and wheats and good things for you. Why? Because bread is life. Bread will sustain you. So I'm going to jump over to when Jesus fed the First, I'm going to jump over to after Jesus had been in, uh, been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And bread is such an important aspect of diets, of the Israelites' diets, of our living, that the devil, when he came to tempt Jesus, the first thing he did was talk to, his phys- to the physical man, speak to Jesus' physical needs, and said, if you are the son of God, go ahead, take these stones, and turn it into bread. I don't know about you, but I know Jesus was hungry. As a matter of fact, I know Jesus was hangry, okay? When you get so hungry that hungry that you feel rage, that you feel upset, everything irritates you, and the devil says, well, you know, you can do it, big Jesus. You can do it. Just turn the loaves into bread, and Jesus had to be like, get out of my face. You're playing games. I'm not doing this with you, but He's like, he wants you, he's like, if you're, if you're God to turn these loaves into bread, and I want you to understand that the bread is a life-sustaining food, that it's a life-sustaining substance. Bread is life. There's a scripture, a story in the Bible when Jesus is feeding the 4,000 people with seven loaves of bread and some fish. Um, that's in Matthew chapter 15, verses 32 to 38. Um, Then Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been here with me for three days, and they have nothing left to eat. I don't want to send them away, or they will faint along the way. The disciples replied, where would we get enough food here in the wilderness for such a huge crowd? Jesus asked, how much bread do you have? Jesus asked, how much bread do you have? do you have? How much of this life-sustaining substance do you have? And they replied, seven loaves and a few small fish. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to the disciples who distributed the food to the crowd. They all ate as much as they wanted. Afterwards, the disciples picked up the seven large baskets of leftover food. There were 4,000 men who were fed that day in addition to women and children. So really, he fed over 4,000 people. Um, The more popular story is when Jesus feeds the 5,000, when Jesus feeds the multitude. 
um, this story is recounted in all four Gospels. I will be talking from the Gospel, I will be taking this scripture from the Gospel of John, John chapter 6. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known of, as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Philip turn, turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip because, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that for this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down. I like that. I like it when Jesus says, tell everyone to sit down. Because it's kind of like he's saying, you've been following me this whole time. Watch this. Watch how I move. Watch how I'm about to show up in your lives today. And so they all sat down on grassy slopes. The men alone, just the men, numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. And after everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. I just want to really quick make a connection to the leftovers here in the feeding of the multitude of the 5,000 and the leftovers when Jesus, when, excuse me, when God had sent the manna from heaven. And not only was God providing bread for today, not only was he providing sustenance for today, not only was he giving life-sustaining food for today, but he was providing for tomorrow. There were 12 baskets of bread left over, 12 baskets of bread and fish left over for another day. When Jesus, excuse me, when God had sent the manna from heaven, he said, on the sixth day, pick twice as much because on the Sabbath, there will be nothing for you to pick, specifically because he was trying to teach the Israelites that you ought to rest on the Sabbath. But on the sixth day, he provided enough for every family. If you had a small family, if you had a big family, no, much, no matter how much manna you picked at that point on the sixth day, it was enough to provide for you for the sixth day and for the seventh day. And I just want you to know that God will provide enough bread for you for today and for tomorrow. He gives enough sustenance for today and for the next day and for the next day and the, for the next day. He gives enough grace for today's sins and tomorrow's sins. He gives enough mercy. He gives enough for today and tomorrow and the next day. God gives enough love for today. He gives enough love for tomorrow. And as a matter of fact, God's love is so great and so immeasurable that we can't even measure it. We can't figure it out. The love that we get today and we say, God, I'm not sure how you could love me tomorrow. He has enough for tomorrow. He has enough love and sustenance and grace and mercy for me for today. And he has enough for you for today. And he has enough for you for tomorrow. And he has enough for you for next week. And 10 years from now, God has enough for you. He provides enough sustenance for you. Bread is life. Bread is also fellowship, right? Um, I want us to think about the big holidays that we might celebrate. Thanksgiving and Christmas comes to mind. And at our dinner tables, we always have a bread dish, stuffing, bread pudding, cornbread, my favorite duck bread, Hawaiian rolls, if you know, you know. Um, and bread represented fellowship in the Old Testament, and it represented fellowship in the New Testament. Bread and the fellowship also represented that we are at a place of peace. There was one day when David asked, is there anyone left from the house of Saul? This is after Saul had been running down David to kill him. 
Saul is now dead, but he remembered the covenant that he had with Saul's son, whose name, thank you, Jonathan. He remembered that covenant. He remembered that that was my brother. He remembered that I love him. And he said, is there, from the New Living Translation, one day David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Don't be afraid. David was giving a peace offering. He wanted to let you know, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm not trying to end this bloodline. I just want to show you peace. I remember my brother who looked out for me all the time. Even when his father tried to kill me, he covered me. And so I want to make sure that I honor still the king that came before me, even though he tried to kill me, that I honor who is left in his house. And so I intend to show, it continues to say, I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Ziba replied, yes, my lord, the king, I am your servant, and I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table like one of the king's own sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and from then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants and Mephibosheth who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem, and ate regularly at the king's table. When David was honoring his covenant with Jonathan, he broke bread with Mephibosheth, and he was able to sit at the king's table. The backstory for that man was that he, he, he was forgotten. He was dropped as a baby, ended up becoming crippled, and nobody cared about him, right? If you can't use your legs, back in the day, if something happened to you that rendered you quote unquote useless, nobody cared about you. And so he was just out there on his lonesome trying to survive. And David remembered his covenant with Jonathan. David remembered the love of his brother and said, is there anyone uh, uh, from the house of, left from the house of Saul that I can show kindness to? And then set it up so that the descendants of the house of Saul right, because we just read that, would get all the property, and then sit at the king's table. And I know David had bread at his table. I know he broke that bread and passed some over so that we could all eat together. And I just want you to know and want you to remember that you have not been forgotten, that there is room at the table for you. There is space for you at the table to break bread. As a matter of fact, I'm inviting you to come sit at this table and to break bread. Break bread that comes from the God who provides, that comes from our God who provides and who sustains. I want, bread is life. I wanna talk to you a little bit about the Passover meal. <clears throat> and so I'm going to jump back to the Old Testament for a second and <clears throat> In Exodus chapter, I'm sorry, when I was reading about is there anyone left from the house of Saul, that was 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. I jumped around a couple verses, but it's 1 through 13. Um, the Passover meal I'm going to talk about is from Exodus 12, verses 14 and 17. Now, what was happening at this point is that uh, the angel was passing over the houses of the Israelites while they were in Egypt so that the, first, the angel would know not to touch these houses where the firstborn, let me back up. So there was a plague that God sent, and it was going to be that I will kill your first, take away your firstborn child. And the only way to make a distinguish, to distinguish the Israelites from the Egyptians is that they put the blood on their doorway. And that way the angel of death would pass over. And so then they had this celebration, and it's, Exodus chapter 12, verse 14 says, this is a day to remember each year from generation to generation. You must celebrate it as a special feast to the Lord. This is a law for all time. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread, for it will remind you that I brought 
your forces out of the land of Egypt on this very day. This festival, festival will be a permanent law for you. Celebrate this day from generation to generation. And so they have this unleavened bread at the table at Passover, and they're breaking the bread, and they're eating the bread, right? But bread is still life. So let me bring you into the New Testament really quick. And I want to talk to you about the Last Supper very quickly. Um, I keep saying very quickly. I don't actually know if it's going to be very quickly. I just want to talk to you about the Last Supper. The Last Supper that was taking place was the Passover feast. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread that Jesus was celebrating with his disciples. And... He, um, prior to that, what, that was the, that was at, prior to the Passover feast, Jesus had fed the 5,000, and I'm going to continue in John chapter 6, and after this, Jesus, I'm sorry, okay, here we go, so I'm going to continue, I'm still in John chapter 6, Jesus feeds the 5,000 people, and now they're following him. Chapter 6, verses 25 to 35. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understand the miraculous signs. But do not be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval, they replied. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. They answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, my father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty again. Bread is life. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is life. <clears throat> so, um, so now we're now I'm jumping over into the Passover feast again, and Jesus is sitting is with his disciples and they're celebrating this festival. Um, <clears throat> and he's breaking bread with his disciples. And Jesus being the bread of life, I think that's very significant because at the time when the temple was erected, only the priests could eat the bread. Only the priests had access to the bread. And at this point in time in the New Testament, those that were following Jesus didn't even recognize that he was the bread, and now that they have access. <clears throat> and so, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. Uh, that's Matthew 26, 26. Luke twenty two fourteen, verse 16 says, When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now, I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. My favorite version of this is from 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, And gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The part that says, which is given for you, other manuscripts say, 
that this is the body that has been broke. This is this is that this which has been broken for you. So this is my body which has been broken for you, because they are breaking the bread, the bread that gives life. Jesus is the bread; He gives life. And bread to this day, in the year of our Lord 2023, is incredibly important. It's so important that the first Sunday of every month, we remember that by breaking bread together, um, and we say, take and eat, this is my body that has been broken for you. And the question is, is how has this body been broken for you? Well, quite literally, Jesus's skin, his flesh was torn apart for us. It was torn when they whipped him. It was torn and broken for us when they placed the crown of thorns on his head. It was torn when they hung him high. It was torn when they stretched him wide. It was torn when they placed the nails in his hand. It was torn when they placed nails in his feet. It was torn when they pierced him in the side with a spear. Jesus, quite literally, his body was broken and torn for us. And that is love. That is the bread that we get to eat today. Jesus is the bread. He is the bread of life. He is a life-sustaining bread. Earlier, it says that if you eat, Jesus had said to those who were following him, that if you eat this bread, you will never be hungry again, right? And that's what Jesus does for us, that he fills us. And so if you believe, right, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And now you have access to the bread. Now, if you have never met Jesus, if you've never said the sinner's prayer before, if, you, if you've never come into community and communion with Jesus, the opportunity is here for you today. But I also want those who have come into community and communion with Jesus to know that the bread doesn't stop at the sinner's prayer, that the bread sustains and Jesus sustains you. And Jesus will sustain you when your husband can't sustain you when your wife can't sustain you, when your friends can't sustain you, when your job isn't filling you, when there's a hole in your heart, when there's a void in your heart, where there's a, a, a void in your soul, Jesus will fix that, okay? He will sustain you when you think your kids can sustain you. They can't con sustain you, but Jesus can. When, you, when the sex isn't enough, I know this is a little graphic, but it is what it is. When the drugs and the alcohol isn't enough, when the weed isn't enough, when all the ways that you decide to self-medicate is enough, Jesus is the bread that will fill and sustain you. When you're online and you're searching for porn to look at, Jesus is actually the bread that will fill and sustain you. All these things, our families, uh, the, 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 the job, the money, the clothes, the, the, the accolades, whatever we can have access to here on earth, all these things were not designed to sustain us. All these things were not designed to give us life. All these things were not designed to fill us. They, 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 they weren't meant to fill the void. Like you're hungry and you want something and you desire something and you're desperate for something. And all these other things that the world can give you is not enough to fill the void. They were never designed to fill the void. But Jesus is the bread. Jesus came so that you could have life and life more abundantly. He is the sustaining bread. Jesus will fill you. Jesus, you will not be hungry again. The type of hunger that you get after you get filled with Jesus is, mm, I just need more Jesus. There's so much more of Jesus for me to discover. There's so much more for me to understand. There's so much more access that we have, right? And I, and I want you to know that Jesus died so that you can have that access, so that you can be sustained, so that we can have life, so that we can live, right? Like, we don't have to go to priests anymore and say, here is our sacrifice and here is the bread and only the priests are eating the show bread and it's only the priests that have access and I and I hope and pray that you've been keeping yourself right so that when you go into the holies of holies that you're not struck down dead but you have access to the father through Jesus you have access to the father there's only one way Jesus is the way 
the truth and the life. And there's only one way to access to the Father. There's only one way to access to the bread that will sustain you, that will fill you, the bread that won't keep you hungry, the bread that will, will, will secure your passions, the bread that's going to show you what it is that you need to do. That's Jesus. Jesus is the bread. A lot of people say things like, ball is life, this is life, that is life. That's not life. Bread is life. Jesus is the life. And I just want you to know that you can have that today. If you have said that sinner's prayer already and you have forgotten, maybe you didn't even realize that there are areas in your life that you needed to be filled and you've been trying to fill those areas in other ways, that you've been working harder to fill those areas, that you've been going out more to fill those areas, that you've been sleeping more to fill those areas, that you've been doing all sorts of things to fill those areas, but the reality is Jesus is the bread. Jesus will fill those areas. Jesus will satisfy you. Bread is sustenance. Bread is life. Jesus, he's the bread. God bless you. Hallelujah. The bread is life. Would you just put your hands together for Jesus in this house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is my bread, my bread, my bread, my bread. Bread when I'm hungry. He's my bread. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the Lord today. Come on, would you lift your hands and give him glory? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for bread in the house? Aren't you glad that there's bread in the house? Aren't you glad that there's bread in the house? Hallelujah. Thank God for the bread. Would you stretch your hands to... Sister Dion, and say, God bless her. Bless her, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After a word like that, you don't need to be pumped or prime or anything like that. The word has gone forth today. The word has gone forth today. And we're we're getting ready to go, but I want to offer up some prayer right now. I want to open this altar right now for prayer. You see, there, the, the thing about bread is if it stays too long, after a while it, it gets moldy. You ever been looking forward to bread and when you open the cupboard and take it out, you realize, wait a minute, the bread got moldy. But... Jesus is the bread that never, 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 never spoils, never runs out, and never gets mold. He remains fresh. Anyone need fresh bread in the house today? Amen. If you need fresh bread at this moment, would you just come forward? We're going to pray for you right now. Jesus is the bread of life. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for my brother as they come. Is there anyone in need of fresh bread? Is there anybody hungry in the house? Is there anybody hungry? Hallelujah. Anyone have received the bread, but you need more bread. You need more. You need more. There's something about, about tasty, delicious bread. When you cut one piece, you end up keep going back, keep going back. I have to tell Sister Kim, don't bother buy any more in this house. But when you eat this bread that is Jesus, when you eat this bread that is Jesus, hallelujah, you keep going back for more. Anybody need more bread in this house? I've had a taste of the bread before. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But now I need more bread. I need more bread. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Anyone need to be filled with bread today? Anyone need more bread in the house? Come on, come forward, come forward. Run quickly, run quickly, run quickly. Time is going. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I need more bread. Hallelujah. There's healing in this bread. There is sustenance in this bread. I might be getting weak, but I, I, if I can just get some more bread. I'm, I'm getting tired. I'm getting weary. I'm getting discouraged. I'm getting depressed. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, so many things are going on. But if I can just get more bread, run and get some bread. Come get some bread. Come get some bread while it's hot. 
Hallelujah. 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 One woman where she came to Jesus uh, and, 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 and she, was, she was in need of something. Her child was sick and, and she came to Jesus. And, and, and Jesus said, listen to me, healing, healing, healing is the children's bread. In other words, it was only for the Jewish people uh, that were supposed to get this. Uh, but, but Jesus broke the barrier when the woman said, even the, the crumbs. Hallelujah. The crumbs from the table. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's bread in the house. There's bread in the house. Uh, some of us are getting tired. Some of us are struggling. But I want to let you know there's bread. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. There's bread in the house. Those of you that are watching online, I want to let you know that this bread is the best bread you can ever have. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. All the other breads, wonder bread and all the other breads, hallelujah, they might be all right, but they're just like life. After a while, they run out. After a while, they spoil. After a while, they're, they're, you get tired of them. But this bread, this bread, I want to let you know, this bread, if you're watching me online, is the best bread you can ever get. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, bread of heaven. With our hands lifted up, with our hands lifted up, with our hands lifted up, all over this building, those of you watching online, hallelujah, hallelujah. As we are praying in this building, I want you to begin to pour out for that bread. If you're hungry, just like that woman, she said, even the crumbs, even the crumbs. She understood that even a little crumb, there was so much power in a crumb. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord in this house. And we're praying in this building. Father. We come to you in the name that is above every other name. We come to you weak. We come to you tired. We come to you stressed. Oh, hallelujah. We come to you with our anxiety. We come to you with our cares and our worry. We come to you, hallelujah, because we need bread today, God. We come to you, God, because you are the bread of life. Uh, hallelujah. As we come to you in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Father, we ask today, Lord, that you will provide the bread for what we need. Uh, hallelujah. You said that healing is the children's bread. Uh, but we have access today to that bread, God, because we are all your children today. Uh, hallelujah. And every need that is in this house, every spiritual need, every physical need, every need that is in this house, uh, Father, we put it to you we put it before you today and ask God hallelujah that the bread of heaven hallelujah that fed the children in the wilderness uh, as we go through these wilderness situations and these wilderness problems and these wilderness struggles uh, God we ask right now in the name of Jesus uh, hallelujah that you will open the windows of heaven uh, and pour out bread on your children as never before hallelujah open the windows of heaven uh, hallelujah and meet every need according to every need uh, that is in this house we lift our faith to you today, God, and ask that in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, bread will be poured out in this place. Hallelujah, bread will be poured out in our lives. Bread will be poured out in our spirit, Lord God. Hallelujah, just as you said, hallelujah, Bethlehem is the house of bread. Hallelujah, let this be Bethlehem in the spirit today. Let this be Bethlehem in the spirit today. Let us not lack bread in any sort of shape, shape or form in the name of Jesus, but let bread hallelujah be continually in the house that the bread of your presence be continually in this house in the name of Jesus we ask in the name of Jesus hallelujah that barriers to bread will be broken hallelujah but the oven will continuously run hallelujah the fire will continuously be on hallelujah because hallelujah you are the God that provides bread hallelujah you are our provider Lord we pray today that you give us this day our daily bread hallelujah give us this day uh, our daily bread hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands up uh, and pour out as we ask for bread in this house. Uh, hallelujah. If you ask, oh, hallelujah, he will grant it unto you. If you ask, uh, he will grant it unto you. Hallelujah. Bread, Lord, bread, Lord, bread, Lord. The bread of your presence. We ask for your healing, God. Hallelujah. We ask for the change in our life. Hallelujah. We fed on so many things. Uh, we have fed on so many negative words. Uh, we have fed on so many demonic words. Uh, we fed on, hallelujah, everything the devil has given us. Uh, but God, hallelujah, we cast aside that plate right now. Uh, hallelujah. And ask, Lord, hallelujah, that you fill us uh, with heavenly bread. Uh, fill us with your spiritual bread today, Lord God. Because we cannot live without it. We cannot survive without it, Lord Jesus. Bread of heaven, fill us till we want no more. I'm going to ask a minister to come and pray for this young man and this young lady here for me, please. Hallelujah. You are the living bread. You are our bread. We thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. Would you put your hands together and give God praise in the house? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you thank him for the bread? Hallelujah, thank him for the bread. Come on, someone. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, this is your child, God. Hallelujah, from the foundation of the world, you created him for the for purpose, God. God, we speak life to him right now, God. We speak breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, from the bread of heaven. Hallelujah. I pray, God, right now, Lord, uh, hallelujah, whatever he is in need of, uh, hallelujah, whatever the need is right now, God, you will supply that need uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, break every fetter, break every chain. Uh, Hallelujah. Break every stronghold in the name of Jesus uh, as we claim deliverance, uh, as we claim healing, uh, as we claim breakthrough. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your servant today. Hallelujah. You are the way maker. Hallelujah. You are the light in the darkness. You are the great I am. You are the healer. I pray, God, for bread today, God. I pray for fresh bread, Jesus. Hallelujah. That will strengthen her where she's weak. Hallelujah. That will fill her where she's empty. Hallelujah. That will bless her where she's barren. We thank you for fresh bread. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us wave our hands in this house and give God praise for bread. Thank God for the bread. Thank God for the bread. Hallelujah. Thank God for the bread. Hallelujah. He is the bread of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone just give this sister a hug right now. Hallelujah. Please. Uh, God bless your brother Kevin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is my bread. Glory! Oh, hallelujah. 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 There's bread in the house. 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 Thank God that there's bread in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I don't have to go hungry. Hallelujah! I don't have to get weak. Hallelujah! I don't have to pass out because there's bread in the house. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be triumphant. Be triumphant.